Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have the on-call filming this week. That's what I'm saying. All right. Can you hear us, Sheila? I can. Not wow. Well, wow. Well. <laughs> I can hear you now. I know, we got you in here. Okay. We're all at attention now. <laughs> all right. The time is 7.01 p.m. and I will call this meeting to order. May we have roll call, please? Mayor Reichel. Here. Pro Tem Handrahan. Here. Trustee Brentnall. Here. Trustee Klassen. Here. Trustee Flores. Here. Trustee Poston. Here. Trustee Siebert. Here. All right. May we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. All right, the first item on tonight's agenda is public comments. Uh, persons desiring to make a public comment on items not on the agenda, please activate the raised hand function in, uh, in the meeting program. Or Sheila, any phone calls or emails in regards to non-agenda items? No, I did not hear from anyone today. Okay. I do not show any raised hands. All right. We got a couple people signed in here with the chambers. Uh, first, we will call Brandy Yost up to the table. <laughs> if you could just state your name and address for the record. And then... My address, too? Is that what you said? Uh, yes, please. Uh, Brandy Yost, 70 County Road 332 in Wrightville. And I apologize, Nicole just told me that my reason for being here has already changed, but I'm going to go ahead and read to you what I had prepared. Um, my name is Brandi Yost, and I'm here on behalf of the Cactus Valley Elementary Parent Teacher Association and our vendors who attend our craft fair. One of the PTA's largest fundraisers is a craft fair held every December. In November 2022, it was brought to my attention that our vendors needed to obtain a Town of Silt vendors license. This was news to me. However, after a discussion with your staff, I felt that when I left that meeting that our issue had been resolved mutually. As soon as I left that meeting in 2022, I changed our application to reflect that a Town of Silt vendor's license is required and included the phone number and who to contact to obtain one. So it was a surprise to me this past year in December 2023, mere days before our event, that your staff contacted me again requesting a list of our vendors to verify if they were in compliance. After multiple discussions, going back and forth, a lot of extra time, effort, and frustration on your part and ours, all of our vendors were properly licensed through the town. Please know that compliance has never been our issue. However, I believe the fact that the vendor's license is issued on a calendar year basis that the vendor's license is issued that way, and the costs do deter people from being compliant. Our concerns are that the majority of our vendors come from outside of Silt, some from outside of Garfield County, and even some from out of state. Purchasing a vendor's license for one single event that happens at the end of the year in December is not economical for small business owners who never attend another Silt event. While $20, the cost of your license, doesn't seem like much, when you consider that a vendor has already paid $40 to $50 to reserve a spot, plus make a request a donation on our behalf of $15 or more towards our PTA, and then add in that $20, they need to make a minimum of $75 just to break even. Your staff has repeatedly mentioned that this is good for other town events, such as the farmer's market, but as I previously mentioned, most of our vendors are not what I would consider local, and they would not attend any other town events. If they're purchasing this license to be compliant in December, it just serves them for a few more weeks. I'm here tonight to ask you to please consider a compromise with us. I'm not asking for an exemption, but rather for you to please consider amending the town code. I, as well as most of our vendors, would like for your town code to allow for your staff to issue a license good for the calendar year for those who want one, but also have an option for a one day, one event license for a lesser fee to not only make it more reasonable for our vendors to purchase and be compliant, but also for the cost to not be a reason that a vendor would back out of our event. That is exactly what happened this year, which in turn caused us to lose money for our teachers, staff, and students. 
We are a volunteer nonprofit organization. We work tirelessly and endlessly to fundraise solely to increase budgets for our staff and teachers and to purchase items that enrich our students' lives. We can't afford to lose our vendors. The Town of Silt and the PTA, as well as our school, are all community-based organizations, and I just think it's imperative for us to all be able to have a good working relationship. So thank you for your time this evening, and thank you for your consideration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Shelly. Hello. Hello. And if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Shelly Korth, 3917 County Road 233, Rifle. And I'm just here to support Brandy as well, but as a vendor side, as I've been to different um, craft fairs and as a stay-at-home mom, a lot of what we work for is just a few craft fairs a year and that's pretty much our own income and the keeping those costs down is very important I know a lot of other vendors that also have difficulties of just signing up with the fee and any uh, sales tax excuse me <coughs> but um, I recently attended a few like rifle and different municipalities where they just gave a form to the vendor who was supporting that nonprofit or that craft fair in which you just charge sales tax and they didn't the town didn't request a fee so I just wanted to kind of throw those ideas out here and I know Nicole had mentioned it's already has changed but um, our surrounding towns are supporting small town entrepreneurs uh, vendors in our small town and seeing those functions thrive so Okay. Uh -huh. Thank, you. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. And that is all that we have signed up in the chambers with us. So thank you guys for coming in. Um, and I assume that we'll get an update from Nicole here at the end of the meeting and just let us know I will. where we're at. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Then moving along, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. And it contains the minutes of the December 11th, 2023 Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, resolution number one, series 2024. Uh, a resolution designated the place for posting notices for CRS section 24-6-402-2C. Uh, resolution number two, series 2024. A resolution of the Board of Trustees appointing Colorado River Engineering as a town water engineer and Michael Sawyer as the town water attorney of the Town of Silt, Colorado, a reappointment of Justin Brittenall as the Garfield County Noxious Weed Advisory Board Representative for the Town of Silt for 2024, uh, resolution number three, series 2024, a resolution amending the Town of Silt Employee Handbook, revised January 2024, and an approval of the Garfield County Housing Authority Property Management Contract. Would you like to discuss any of those agenda? Or those yes, consent? Mr. Mayor, I'd like, I have a question on number five, and maybe uh, Jeff can answer it. Does, um, just for my information, when this handbook, does the heads of each department have any say what goes in this handbook? I mean, do you talk to them about it? Or, I mean, or where does all this handbook stuff come from? Do department heads have anything to do with it? Or For sure, <clears throat> we have a uh, contract with... Uh, ILG, they are a uh, human resources uh, contractor, as you know. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, she, a couple of years ago, looked at our, our handbook and revised it with all of our input. Uh, everybody had a hand in, uh, in revising it. Uh, what was revised this year were, were, I think, just some of the benefits changes uh, that were adopted as part of the 2024 budget. Okay, I, I, I thought so, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. I just wanted yeah. to ask so. Yeah, everybody gets to, gets to raise their hand and, and be involved in put that process. Okay. Okay. And that's an, that's an annual thing? Um, or just as needed? Kind of as needed. I mean, we've got a long list of, of uh, uh, policies, rules and regulations and stuff that come up during the course of the year and we talk about them along with the uh, 75 ordinances that we need to <laughs> uh, code changes that we need Growing, to bring but i mean there's always something right. so yeah it's a it's it's an i wouldn't say it's annual i'd say it's ongoing okay. you know 
Has it changed annually, every year revised or reviewed? I think it probably is to some degree. Amy, when was the last time before this one that we revised it? Or last annual? January. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's annual. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> well, it's because we added the um, the additional. Um, I'm gonna spit this out in a minute. Holiday, and then where your 401 and vacation started immediately instead of after six months. So it doesn't happen annually. I would say just whenever the HR subcommittee and the board approves uh, new benefits okay. for the. Uh, employees okay thank you that was my yep. question okay yeah. any other items for discussion or would someone like to make a motion mr mayor I'll make a motion to pr approve the consent agenda as presented second uh, motion by trustee seifert to approve the consent agenda as presented seconded by trustee poston all those in favor <laughs> aye. aye all the opposed motion carries unanimously uh, does the staff or board have any agenda changes tonight we don't have any step, any changes. Um, the only thing I would say is since we have some of the members of the public that spoke during public comments, if maybe Nicole could just touch on the vendor license thing right now instead of making these people wait till the end of the meeting. Yes. No, that's fine, yeah, because that's going to be my question okay. too. All right, um, we'll go ahead and just put that right before resolution number five. Um, any other agenda changes before we move on? Okay. Uh, seeing none, we'll move on to uh, just be an information item. If Nicole could just update us on the vendor license. Yes, sir. In your recent adoption of the fee schedule, it was changed that the vendors, instead of a $20 vendor fee per year, it's going to be a $5 vendor fee per event or $20 vendor fee annually. So it does leave the ability for a vendor to do a craft fair in December the opportunity to not have to pay for an annual license and not get every event that the town does or is happening in the town, um, they wouldn't have an opportunity to attend those. So it is going to be a $5 fee um, per the resolution that was adopted for the fee schedule. $5 per event or $20 for the year. Okay. And that's to help because we've, we do have people that attend just one event. <clears throat> and they, they're not able to commit to coming to every single farmer's market or coming to um, every event that we do. Or there's like um, what Miss Yost was saying, she has people that come from out of town that they're coming just for this one single event. So trying to make sure that we create SILT as open for business an opportunity to, um, to have fairs and bring people into the town, we decided to go on ahead and change that in the fee schedule. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> is that uh, similar to other communities or is how's Rifle and It is. Other, other? Yeah. So I did some research into the other communities and Newcastle does the $5 an event or um, $20. They do a business license um, for $20 for those vendors instead of a vendor's license. We have to call it something different. Um, and I just don't think that they've updated their code yet or their um, verbiage because the state of Colorado passed a law that in order to be a licensed business within a municipality, you have to have um, a storefront and you have to be in that uh, jurisdiction. And so we can't call it, a, for a vendor that's out of rifle, we can't call it a business license because they're not actually in the town of Silt. So it has to be a vendor's license. So I'm sure that once Newcastle, they'll change that verbiage um, to change it to a vendor's license or something similar rather than a business license. And then Rifle does just a sales tax license. And theirs is um, $25 for the sales tax license, but it does not, they don't specify vendor business, they just only do a sales tax license. So they have to obtain a sales tax license and they can attend any event. Does the state, Nicole, has specific requirements <laughs> for vendor that <coughs> to supply the license that um, we need to do like more investigation on and look into the business or it's just, what no, is it? No, the bigger thing is from? just the sales tax. I see. It, every municipality is just wanting to make sure that they have an accurate list of who's going to be submitting sales tax and the record keeping of and the retention of um, 
the numbers. We collect the sales tax numbers with the vendor's license, with the business license. And it's just to make sure that we have our records that we need on who's going to be submitting sales tax to us. And it's like checks and balances. It's that accountability, too, that if we had to audit somebody, we <coughs> could. Um, but outside of that, we just make sure that we have that retention of record. Okay, excellent. So if someone's putting on a craft show, everyone that comes to the craft show has to put, get a vendor's license for that particular craft show. Not just the craft show vendor license, it's for every single, anyone with crafts that show up. Yeah, so everybody, they remit sales tax individually. So each individual business has to submit the paperwork. And there isn't any, you know, just to piggyback on, on Sam's comment, there isn't any, every, you know, I guess vendor or, you know, would have to be separate. There isn't any sort of permit for like a group thing, is there? There's not unless it's all going to one bank account that they would submit sales tax okay, all together. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's really just a sales tax. It's just making sure that that we're able to um, collect the sales tax that's needed and have the ability to double check and make sure that it's being remitted because the state collects our sales tax. We don't do it ourselves. So it's just making sure that we have that documentation. Uh -huh. Okay. So I know that I know a few people that do crafts and, and stuff and they're always skipping the town of sale because it's I don't know exactly what maybe it's more difficult or cost more money to show up and they, they didn't quite you know they don't they don't make as much or whatever because I know the back a lot of people go to the back and do theirs and a lot of people go up valleys and do theirs <clears throat> I just like to make sure we're comparable so maybe we'll get all those more business that way more crafts and shows like that in, in our area it definitely adjusting the price definitely helps um, right. bring more vendors in and it's it is showing on good faith that we do want these events to happen in the town right. and that we are encouraging that to take place thank you all right thank you thank you very much yes, right. <clears throat> yes thank you okay have a good night thanks all right. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thank you for coming in for sure, yeah. <coughs> All right. and, and thanks, Nicole, for yeah. adjusting that lower. Like, yeah. <laughs> no more? Go at the river. <clears throat> All right. Re next up is resolution number five, series of 2024, a resolution <laughs> finding substantial compliance with an annexation petition for a property known as 129 West Home Avenue, Silt, Colorado. And I will turn this over to Nicole. You guys would like to take a seat closer to the microphones. You guys are up. Okay, I have um, George and Israel Marioni here, as well as Steve Wisely, their representative that's been helping them through this annexation. Um, they have applied to annex their property at 129 West Home Avenue. This property is not enclaved, but it is. Um, it does qualify for annexation. We're here for substantial compliance tonight, um, which is where you all would give permission to allow me to continue to work on this and figure out everything else that's needed. Um, I do have a pretty complete staff report here that uh, the map right now that's up there shows exactly where it's at. It is surrounded by um, town property on three of the four sides. To the north and to the east are um, our two zone districts. And then to the west, there is the Main Street Plaza, which is the PUD. And then to the south is the county. So um, it, it does qualify for the annexation that it um, does meet the one sixth uh, touching of our, um, our town limits. And when I'm looking at this, um, sorry, Sheila, I did not, my, the rest of my report must be on the printer. Um, so if you would scroll down just a little bit, um, right there, the comprehensive plan, when I'm looking at this, doesn't make a ton of sense for that uh, property there. It is listed as service and commercial support, seeming that it is really surrounded by more residential um, in the R2 zone district. I would say even though the comprehensive plan does not necessarily support 
this being zoned an R2 zone just being zoned R2 for single family residents. Um, we would still like to see this annexation come through to the town. It, they did go to the county first and with a single family permit and had a plan review done. The county came back and said, well, hold on after reviewing this. It seems as if it would be beneficial to the town and the county if you did not have a septic field or a septic tank and a leach field um, at this particular location, seeming that it's really, um, really downtown off of, off of West Home Avenue. Um, when I'm looking at that, it does make sense that there would be an R2 zone district here and a single family house more so than um, a county property or something that is uh, commercial based. I do have, sorry, Sheila, can you go to the annexation map? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we do, we do have where there was previously existing water and sewer that were tied to this property. Um, given everything that was happening with the water treatment plant, um, we did let the Marionis know that the best thing that they could do was annex into the town rather than trying to get out of town tap fees. Um, because at the time that they started this just about a year ago, we weren't sure where we were going to be at today like we do know now so there have previously been tap fees there the fees were not continued to um, be paid therefore they did relinquish their their rights to those so they are going to have to re um, tap onto the system and repay those tap fees but there has previously been water and sewer that have um, come to this property sewer as well or yeah, water and sewer. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, Just had... because you mentioned septic tank earlier, I didn't. Yeah, because they're technically part of the county, and since they lost <clears throat> their, they relinquished. They they didn't. Um, the previous owner <clears throat> relinquished their water and sewer taps. If they were going to come through the county without being able to um, get out of town tap fees from us or services from us, they were going to have to put in a septic tank in a leach field. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, so not, I understand that's not in now. Place I right it. now. Is what you're saying? If, no, they're going to have to um, retie onto everything. I see. Yeah, they would fully dig, and <clears throat> mainly because they want to make sure it's done right. Yeah. Um, that's what they do, but they want to make sure that their their tie-ins on all are all correct because that was a while back that they that they that that had been relinquished and those had been used. Right. Um, overall, I find that this annexation is good for the town. Um, even though it does not meet the comprehensive plan as we would hope, I do think that it is a good fit. The R2 zone district is a good fit. Um, it did go in front of the Planning and Zoning Commission on December 5th, and they voted unanimously to approve a recommendation to the Board of Trustees for zoning and annexation approval. And as I said before, this is just for a resolution of substantial compliance. After this, I've, I've slowly but surely been cranking out trying to figure out what the annexation process is because it's state statute and there's a lot that goes to it. Um, so they went in front of the Planning and Zoning Commission for substantial compliance, a recommendation. They're coming in front of you for substantial compliance and then they'll have a four week um, public notice. And so that public notice will go out, um, our town clerk, Sheila will send that out, and then they'll come back in front of you with finding the facts. And that'll be when I bring any additional information that we do find back in the annexation map um, that's in front of you on the screen right now. There are elements on here that are not updated. It says 2022, so they have their, uh, they have Book Cliff working on amending all of that. So that'll be fully prepared by the time we come back for findings of facts. And then the findings of facts will be another resolution. And then we'll have an ordinance as well for zoning and um, annexation. And so you'll have two readings of those ordinances. And then we can hopefully um, proceed through. We'll have to record the plat. There's a couple steps after that, but 
I know that they are definitely um, looking to break ground in the spring and have their plans ready. They're just waiting for an annexation <coughs> approval so they can submit those for building permit. I do recommend approval for the resolution of substantial compliance. I also have a recommended motion at the bottom of my staff report and I am available to, oh, they do not have water rights. They will have to pay the water right dedication in lieu of fee. Okay. All right. And what else? would, sorry, what oh. would that fee is? Be? That. Out of curiosity. Fee. 1,100 per, 1,100 and something per EQR. Yeah, I was going to say it just, <clears throat> I think that just updated with the new. Um, it's somewhere in that table. neighborhood. Okay. Without looking right at it. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions for Nicole? Then, the applicants have anything they'd like to add to the conversation? No, other than uh, thanking Nicole for all the work she's doing, <coughs> uh, for sure. Um, we feel, again, as Nicole feels, and we hope you feel, that uh, certainly a septic tank and a leach field isn't something you want within that area. Uh, it's much cleaner, much easier to be hooked into the system here. And, um, you know, we think that just makes sense all the way around. And that's why we're going through this whole process to get that done, to become part of SIL versus the county. Okay. Nicole, just as a comment, um, another recommendation that was made to have um, the residential portion of it approve, approved, it was that it was better than having like trucks and other commercial type of businesses going in where, where you have a lot of resident, residents, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the current use right now. I mean, it's storage and trucks and things like that, and it'd be a much better fit for the for the community, really, and for the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, do you guys agree? or? Yeah, I think I mean, this is one thing where you do a, a comprehensive plan is always a large-scale view of what you want to have happen in, a, in an area, and there's always, you know, plots of land that get thrown into something that they, they don't fit the best into, possibly. Um, I mean... Mm -hmm. Just to the west of this parcel is a multi-family development, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, so to have multi-family and then a little county parcel that could be a, a, a trucking business or, an, you know, I mean, you could have horses out there or whatever, just doesn't quite fit in that whole yeah. right. scheme. So by annexing it in and making it R2, we kind of tie that whole thing into being a, a neighborhood. And Especially if the PUD comes along. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the back of my mind, Mayor Reichel, I had, um, I was just thinking of the commercial spaces that we do have available and um, just thinking about the comprehensive plan. Obviously, um, I'm in agreement of making that neighborhood uh, more of a fitting, but we have a concern of how many commercial areas we are annexing and making it residential. How do we have a concern? Do we still have a lot of room and space? That just went in the back of my mind as I was reading the package. Yes, we, I have looked at the different available spaces for commercial. I believe the reason why I wasn't here when the comprehensive, when the comprehensive plan was created I believe the reason why they started to kind of um, move up to Home Avenue and even a little bit farther up to Grand, even like in this whole area right here, I believe the reason why they were starting to try to change that zoning into more of a business zoning was just for potential growth. But I think right now we have to kind of look at that balance of we don't have, we don't necessarily have people knocking down our door to increase the commercial um, in the town of Silt, but <coughs> residential is of high use. I mean, it, it is something that they, that the, every community needs. And so if we have to maybe not think so much about the commercial growth on the residential streets to the north of Main Street and think more residentially. Um, it makes sense. It makes sense currently it makes sense for where we are today maybe not where we were in 2017 when the comprehensive plan was created but it makes sense for where we are today 
And, and today, um, <coughs> this is a great conversation, but also today, just so that you know, the this is for substantial compliance, but there will be a whole nother conversation at the next meeting and that ordinance for zoning that um, a decision does not have to be made today for zoning. So if that's something that you wanted to look into a little bit more, or you had questions that you wanted me to answer specifically that I needed to look into more, we will have another opportunity to, to discuss zoning. Yeah, and you know, the comprehensive plan is, you know, a guide basically. It's not, you know, the law or anything like that. And, you know, back when we did the comprehensive plan, I don't think that, yes, I mean, I, you know, the, the two blocks, you know, I think, it, and, and, and I know it says, you know, outside of the downtown area, but I don't think in reality much thought was given to you know west of first street on that stretch other mm -hmm. than in front of uh you know on highway six you know so yeah i mean i agree them that's that's a better residential spot than commercial anyway <clears throat> well in this this particular location it's not like right here where home avenue is a through street west orchard heading and it heads into the tara subdivision so it's not a through street it would be it would be slightly awkward to have commercial heading into that residential, a single commercial space heading into that residential district, uh, into that residential subdivision. It's not a through street. It would, it, it's a one-way entrance and exit. So it just leads into just a residential subdivision. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah. The better fit is residential. Mm. I think so. Okay, this is a public hearing. Um, and we're not, and just for a, a point of clarification, all we're, doing tonight is is this parcel the right thing to be annexed into town mm -hmm. zoning will come like Nicole said at a later later meeting um, but I definitely think I mean we don't want a septic system in town is, no, the, we can is avoid the, it the biggest part of this whole whole thing so I think it's appropriate to to bring this into town so if there's no discussion I will open up to public hearing so okay uh, the time is 7.33 p.m. and I'll open up the public hearing for resolution number five, series 2024. Uh, persons desiring to make a public comment on this agenda item, please activate the raised hand function in the meeting program or Sheila, any phone calls or emails in regards to this agenda item. No, sir, I did not hear from anyone. Okay. Do we have any raised hands? We do not. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and would anybody in the chamber is with us like to speak <laughs> and make a public comment? Okay. Uh, seeing none, the time is 7.34 p.m. and I will close the public hearing and then open up to further discussion by the board or a motion. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number five, series 2024, a resolution finding substantial compliance with an annexation petition for a property known as 129 West Home Avenue, South Colorado. Second. Okay. Uh, motion by Trustee Clausen to approve <coughs> resolution number five, series 2024, uh, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Hanrahan. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We'll be seeing you guys you. here again. Yeah. 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 We'll be waiting. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a good night. Thank you. you too. All right. Next item on the agenda is the flock camera system discussion. Now we'll turn this over to Chief and Lieutenant. I'm not sure if they're going to come in and join us or join us from Zoom. You forget this was meeting night. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 saw I mean, we're right on time. Yeah, we're we're two minutes early. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go see if this is, uh, this is also Hector from Flock. In case um, there's any questions that um, we can answer. Okay. I know it's close, Chris. The in lieu of for domestic waters, one thousand one hundred and thirty-seven. Close. Uh, 
I mean, so that, you know, that could be a substantial amount. So so not sure. packet. Thanks, Chief. You don't get one. All right. <laughs> I'll go another. <laughs> it's actually gone up, Trey. It's 1171 this year. Oh, it's not updated okay. on the website yet. All right. Oh, it should be. Nicole. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Good evening. Man. We'll just go ahead and turn it over to you guys. All right. Um, so we have Hector um, from Flock is joining us via Zoom. Um, so he'll be available to answer questions again um, about the Flock system. Uh, I don't know if you want me to go into uh, explanation about the Flock system again and maybe uh, just a brief overview. <clears throat> okay. Just for, you know, the people at home. Uh, no problem. Uh, so the Flock system uh, is a license plate reader system. Uh, it's currently in use by the Glenwood Springs Police Department. Uh, the Garfield County Sheriff's Office is also, I uh, uh, got approved and is installing cameras uh, throughout the county. Um, the camera's uh, purpose are to help solve crime, um, find stolen vehicles, um, find missing people, uh, people that have been entered as uh, attempt to locate welfare checks, um, I, yeah, amber alerts, silver alerts, uh, things of that nature. Um, so it's, it's basically to help solve crime. All right, thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, are we discussing it? Yeah, if you have any questions or yeah. go ahead. Oh, I just want to discuss yeah. with us. I think over previous meetings, we had some concerns uh, regarding the flock system and potential like issues that it could cause. My overall uh, perception of this is that it would be, would be extremely helpful to the police department. And that's a tool uh, that they would, in combination with other areas, be able to use, like they said, to solve crimes. I looked into their numbers of car recoveries and some of the crimes that they uh, have solved, and it's on their board report, and those are really good numbers. Uh, so I, I, I think that that's a great tool. I believe that if this ever becomes an issue, let's say five years from now, 10 years from now, if there is any kind of data breach or misuse, but I really don't see that happening at the moment, and um, I just see the utility, and um, I would definitely support the flock system for the town and uh, for the police. Um, okay. Just a quick question. Who, I know they maintain, how long do these cameras last? Just a rough idea. I mean, and who replaces them then once, are they ours once we do them, or are they? The, the cameras, uh, they're owned by flock. Um, they uh, take care of the installation, all maintenance. Uh, if a camera breaks, goes down for whatever reason, Flock will come out and, uh, and take care of fixing the camera. So um, it's kind of a warranty while we have their system, they take care of it the whole thing. Correct, yeah, and we just pay that one cost. Okay. Yep. So what was the cost again? It's 2500 per uh, camera. And then uh, subscription? Uh, the initial contract is two years. Um, the first year uh, uh, includes the installation costs. Um, and then after that, it's just 2500 per camera. So it's how only, many cameras? Uh, and five. Five? Okay, yep. that's what I thought. I can remember. Um, how well has this helped city of Glenwood? In the first year that they had it installed, um, I believe they... Kept, they caught 25 stolen vehicles. Um, within the first three days of uh, installing the cameras, they got a stolen vehicle and uh, uh, a missing person. Okay, thanks. How far up and down the valley is it? Do has them? Does rifle or I mean, what, just a rough idea? Uh, currently, it's just Glenwood Springs. They've got multiple cameras throughout the city. Um, and the uh, sheriff's office is going to be installing them from 
Uh, they were looking at basically the Mesa County line uh, on I-70 all the way up to the CMC turnoff on Highway 82. How far did they put them apart then? How far, how far are they? Just roughly. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, oh, okay, I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so it's only $12,500 to have these cameras? Um, the, the first year, um, I believe it was like 16000 to include the installation costs. And then the ongoing uh, was uh, 15000 so I think I think we're actually looking at six cameras total. And you're only going to have them up up and down Main Street. Uh, we are looking at Main Street, um, at the overpass, at the 97 overpass, uh -huh. um, and then also on uh, the river frontage road. Okay, so it's sixteen thousand a year. Uh, f Fifteen thousand a year the first year is uh, gonna include the installation cost too. Okay. Um, so I think it was closer to like 16,500 right. or something like that. 16,000 a year, if I yep. that. okay. And then does this uh, determine, <clears throat> can this uh, single out make and model of the vehicle? It can. As well? Yep. It's 15 a year or every two years for the contract? Uh, it's 15,000 every year. Okay. Yep. So how far east of town would they go to the roundabout then or a little bit further than that? Um, we're looking at putting one uh, at the town limits on at both ends, both ends. of Main Street. Um, and those cameras would be faced towards Silt, um, capturing the vehicles coming into Silt. Uh, the sheriff's office is looking at putting two cameras at town limits, but those cameras would be capturing vehicles coming out of Silt and into the county. Okay. Okay, so if, if we don't do it, the county will still have at least a camera on either end of town. Yep, but it's only capturing I mean, vehicles going, going out, yeah. out of town. Um, and that would be the only cameras in the silt area. Gotcha. Yep. And you guys would, would lose it. access. And we would lose access as well. Yep, that's correct. But wouldn't it be the same having cameras? You get the same picture, just the opposite, depending on where they're facing. And then we don't even have to pay for them. And then I'm sure, like, would they... Do you think the county would be like, <clears throat> we have a murder in town, oh, you can't see our cameras? Or would they, I, would they be share, share with us? I can pr provide some um, background on kind of how the deployments work um, so that folks understand um, kind of uh, the thinking around locations. Is that helpful? Yeah, that answers my question, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, so I think what, um, something that's important to understand is that each camera captures um, one direction of traffic, the rear of the vehicles. So it's um, using the machine the machine learning in order to understand if it's a Toyota versus a Honda, it looks at um, unique f uh, features uh, from the rear of the vehicle, as well as the fact that every state requires uh, rear license plates. And so they're capturing two lanes of traffic um uh you know as cars go away from them so so capturing the, the the rear vehicles and so the ones that the county is looking to place um would be exiting the town and what's important to know there is that there is a proactive side um to these cameras right so uh your police department will get alerted if there's a stolen vehicle or felony vehicle that enters the town within 20 seconds and so then uh having information on vehicles that are wanted coming in provides them the ability to have that um, proactive response um, versus uh, for investigations, which the uh, sheriff's cameras will, will be helping uh, you all uh, in those instances as well. But but um, um, that is why the deployment uh, was structured as it is. So the cameras only capture the rear of the vehicle in two lanes. So you would actually have the front of one lane and the, the rear of the other lane if you only have two lanes, is that correct? If it's a two lane road, um, the way that the cameras are um, focused and it lets, and you're saying two lanes, one in each direction, the camera would only be focused on one lane um, so that it's looking again, just at those ident uh, identifying features. And that also helps um, improve privacy protections, right? So it's not capturing um, people, it's again, just capturing vehicles. So I think one, one point I really like clarification on as we go into this conversation is we keep hearing we're going to lose access to the sheriff department's information. We're not, we're going to lose access to a dashboard where we can access that information, but a car comes through silt 
that their cameras pick up, we work with Garfield County. We might have an officer closer. They're going to notify us that this camera has a hit. So we're not technically <clears throat> losing all of that information. We're going to lose a portion of it, correct? We're going to... So uh, we're going to lose access to having that information at our fingertips. We would have to contact the sheriff's office, ask for that information, wait for an approval process. Um, also, the, they're only going to have the two cameras going of uh, vehicles going out of town. So if we have a crime, spe uh, crime spree that happens in town that involves a suspect that lives in town that never <clears throat> leaves the town limits, we don't have those cam. We won't have those cameras in town to actually solve silt crime. Well, we're not going to. If that person's in town and they stay in town, we're not going to catch them leaving town or coming into town. So those cameras on the. Well, we could because we've also one of the cameras is going to be uh, placed uh, near the roundabout. The roundabout. Yeah. Uh, plus the one at the overpass. Um, if they happen to go over to like Golden Gate, there's the one on the river frontage road. Um, so we've we've got both ends of town covered. Plus we've got additional cameras within within the town too. And these cameras are focused down on Main Street and this the overpass. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we still have First Street, Seventh um, Street, that come down into town that aren't covered of stuff coming through. And if we get a hit on flock as something coming into town it's we can be on it pretty quickly if we get a hit on you know we get a notification through dispatch that it's leaving town garfield county's like the rest of us were spread thin um they may have somebody in a whole nother area that wouldn't be able to get to it so if we could catch them coming into town while they're already in town of locating the vehicle, we have a higher success rate. Well, and that's the proactive piece that Hector was talking about. Um, capturing the vehicles actually coming into town, we have we can actually take a proactive approach to it and go find the vehicle. If we're getting alerted after the fact, after the vehicle has already been in town and leaving town, there, there's nothing we can do with that. So if they break into Cactus Valley School and head north, we won't be able to, it won't be on the cameras anyhow. Well, and it depends how did they get to Cactus Valley to begin with. Maybe they came down Main Street and went up first to get to Cactus Valley. Through reading door cameras, security footage, um, we can get an approximate time. And it's like, okay, there's, as the conversation was before, no, there's not that many vehicles driving through town at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning when most of this is most of our break-ins happen. So it, it really narrows down suspects relatively quickly. So just to piggy, just verify that for me. So most of our break, or what percentage of our break-ins are people that live in town or, in, or come into town? Is there, or it varies. I, I don't know how to get to those kind of numbers. Uh, a lot of our break-ins have been people that live in town and we've had other break-ins where um, they just recovered some stuff in Grand Junction some stolen property it's they start in Glenwood work their way to parachute battlement into Junction and then start working their way back so how does it work exactly so say there's a stolen car out of Glenwood coming this way I mean, you guys are obviously probably notified of it. And then with the camera, do you have somebody just sitting there watching the camera to see if it comes our way? Or how does the camera know to notify on a certain vehicle? Or We'll get a text message um, and an email um, alert to that. Plus it alerts on our uh, laptops, the MDTs, and our vehicles which then provides the picture of that vehicle, the camera that it alerted to, and why it's wanted. Maybe it's a missing person. 
um, welfare check. Maybe it's a stolen vehicle, and it'll give us those details. And then, uh, depending on which camera it hit, we'd know where to go set up and start looking for it. And maybe it's coming into town from Coleridge High School and alerts on that camera. And then we get another alert that it passed the camera at the roundabout. And then maybe we get a third alert that it went, it's going over the overpass now. So it gives us that trail to go and uh -huh. try to locate it. Okay, and then I'm assuming somebody had to enter the information to say, look for this vehicle. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so it could be it could be a stolen vehicle out of silt um, that we've we've uh, entered the the stolen vehicle info through dispatch um, that way, or maybe it's a stolen vehicle out of Grand Junction. But another a law enforcement agency would enter the vehicle and why it's wanted to begin with. Okay. Yep. And once we locate the vehicle, then we confirm it through dispatch that one we have the right vehicle, two we have the right plate, and have dispatch confirm the information that we've received. It's not, this takes a hit and we we do a felony stop on them or whatever, in a stolen vehicle or something high risk. It's, we confirm it with through dispatch. Dispatch confirms that yes, the vehicle we are behind is a wanted vehicle for whatever reason, and then we take appropriate action. It's, okay. it, there's, right. a, there's a double, um, security blanket there for lack of better words okay all right thank you guys so let's say go, a person goes to bed he gets up in the morning his car is stolen you can go backwards you have access to us to go backwards and look at that then. correct yep so, so okay so. yeah we could put the plate uh once we get the vehicle inf information from the from the owner we can put that plate number into the flock system and see if it pinged on any of the cameras um, and so maybe it alerted to the camera going over the overpass, maybe then the one at the Golden Gate. And um, so we know, like, we can go look over. Maybe the vehicle got abandoned over at the Golden Gate. So if a, if a vehicle's stolen in Denver, where does <clears throat> Block then get their data from? from a stolen vehicle in Denver that might ping on a camera? It's connected through the uh, through CCIC and NCIC, which is like, it's the state database and the national database, um, which would be basically like the hot list um, of stolen vehicles, wanted vehicles, missing people, uh, vehicles entered as an attempt to locate for whatever reason. Um, so once the Denver officer contacted his dispatch center and said, I've got this stolen vehicle. Here's all the info, vehicle info, maybe some details. Maybe it was involved in like a carjacking or something. Um, those details would get then entered by the dispatch center into the CCIC and CIC system, which would then connect with Flock. So when Flock is running these plates, the, vehicle, the plates of the vehicles driving by the cameras, that's how they know that the, that, uh, plate and vehicles wanted. Okay. So then my question then to follow up on that would be, I would probably for Hector, is who's vetted Flock as a viable company to access those databases? Because I'm assuming I can't access that database of stolen vehicles in the in the country. So who who is it that said Flock has the authority to access this database? So the way that the um, NCIC um, list works is that it's a we pull from that list and provide that information directly to law enforcement. Um, Flock employees as a whole as a whole do not have access to that data. That's um, CGIS uh, data, right? And so um, we pull from that national database, which is updated um, several times a day. Um, we pull from it actually double the amount of times that it's it's updated just to ensure that it's as, as accurate as possible and then provide those hits directly to law enforcement. We don't have access um, to any of your data, right? So any of the footage that's um, recorded or um, any of the alerts that are received. Um, in order to get access to that, um, uh, key employees at Flock um, did go through a, you know, 
screening process um, that allows them to set up the systems that allow for our systems to talk to um, the national database. Um, does that answer your question? To a certain extent, I still don't know who gave Flock the authorization to access that that database. Is it? Did the FBI tell you guys you can pull from there? So it's so the 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 um, NCIC is. Um, something that is held through the Department of Justice. Um, and that is, they have a procedure in place uh, for um, different technology companies um, that provide services to law enforcement. So right now, your police department, um, you know, uh, has access to these databases through other um, software companies. Um, this is one um, different version of that. Okay. So, a question. So this only works on vehicles, right? I mean, what I'm getting at is, let's say somebody goes into holiday or to Red River, or the motel, and robs him and rides off on his bicycle. That that does us no good. Okay. What's the scope of uh, crimes that this will be looking for? Like a fender bender. It would be anything that a vehicle has been entered into the CCIC and CIC yeah, database. Yeah, this color of vehicle, maybe so model. Maybe it could be a, a hit and run suspect that gets entered um, into the system. It could be any type of reason that the vehicle gets entered. Silver alert, amber alert, um, welfare check. Um, we get quite a few of those. Um, parties not doing well, uh, making statements. Um, that can be entered into here. It's yes, it it's definitely a crime assistant tool to fight crime tool, like the computers you have in front of you. But it's not just for crime. It's for you know public safety all the way around. Runaways, Amber Alert, Silver Alert, welfare checks, that type of thing. It's not just focused into catch them bad guys. It's got a wide variety of, re of purposes. Can it be used for, say, uh, there's an accident after a camera and there's suspicion, you look back to see if he's swerving before he went, when he went through the camera and stuff like that? It won't show that. No. Yeah, it's the cameras aren't just recording nonstop. <laughs> <coughs> it's just a still, I assume it's just a still photo. Yeah, of, of each. Of each. Rear of the vehicle. Correct. Yeah, it'd be like a lot like um, <coughs> the toll roads. Put people don't have toll passes. They they catch the plate, send you a bill. Um, it you know it runs off the same system, catches a plate and sends it to us, if if it comes up as a hit for whatever reason. Do you guys have plans to expand this system if we approve it? I think uh, that's going to depend on how successful it is. Um, that's something we could explore um, and maybe covering 1st Street and 7th uh, going up towards Silt Mesa. Um, I would say that this would be a good, uh, the amount of cameras that we're initially installing is a good test trial. And if it's successful, then maybe that's something we could look at. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's always, I mean, Flock is not a, a huge company from, I mean, there's, yes, they have cameras out there. Yes, they're, they're doing something. They're not a, a huge company. Um, and it's always, I mean, this is a, a public meeting, but it's, it's real simple, I think, to say to these guys, hey, we want, eight cameras for X number of dollars just because they came to us with the price of what it costs doesn't mean that there's not a negotiation room in there if we do decide to do this I think uh, you know unless there's that's already happened I don't know if there's been negotiations or if they came to us to the price list and said this is this is what it costs so um, if they've got Glenwood Springs and Garfield County and and Silt then maybe there's a, a bulk discount there for the town of Silt. I don't care what Garfield County wants to spend or the town of Glenwood because they have more money than we do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I think that uh, we've all been quoted the same. 
Uh, pricing. 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 Yeah. Uh, so, and I know Mayor Pro Tem has a deep dive into the computer science side of this thing. <laughs> so, is it my turn? If you would like it to be, <clears throat> it's your turn. Um, first of all, I, 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 I want to thank Sil PD. I had the opportunity to sit with them for, I think it was nearly an hour, like up to the minute, um, to, to see the system at work. And more importantly, for them to help me understand um, what the guardrails are, what the control mechanisms are. I'm a big privacy advocate, probably because I'm a nerd. Um, I still have serious concerns about Flock and with the data and with the lack of validation that they delete it. I, if, if I'm being honest, I don't think they do because it's in their best business interest not to. I think they say it, but they've never proven it. I also have concerns about privacy because Flock data has been requested as a part of civil cases, divorces, multiple. Whether or not they've been able to get through with those I don't know. It's, it wasn't publicly available, so I guess that's up to interpretation. Um, there are cases where some law enforcement officers have used the data, and I don't want to even imply that Silk PD would do this, um, would use it for non-law enforcement purposes. One glaring example, a police officer in Washington, D.C. used flock data to extort individuals whose cars were seen at a gay nightclub. And again, we don't have any gay nightclubs. I don't want to imply that SOPD would ever do that. The technology facilitates it, and that's my concern, that the guardrails are human. So we have to trust the individuals using the tool if we can't trust the tool, and I don't trust the tool. But after having an opportunity to sit with the officers and they printed out the Glenwood Springs policy for usage, um, that gave me some clarification on, on how they would grant authorization for other municipalities to access the data. So please feel free to jump in when I'm wrong. It's inevitable. Um, so let's say Glenwood PD needed access to camera data that was picked up in cell or picked up by a cell camera. They can't simply go online and get it. It's a permission-based system. So so PD would have to authorize that access. So there's a human control mechanism in place that, again, prevents it from just expanding far and wide. And that, and the authorization come from the higher ups, either commanders, Thank you. chiefs, yeah. or assistant chiefs. It's not one officer going to another one going, hey, can you, you know, got a hit on this flock, can you let us have access? It's, it's, there's a procedure and a process where it's the upper administration, either lieutenants on or on up, that have to grant this, and then there has to be a reason. Hey, just want to check out your traffic there and so for it, that's not a good reason. If we got a ping off a cell phone for stolen car, or missing person, or whatever, and we're, Heading possibly heading your way, can you, you know, let us in? Yeah, but in, in lieu of judicial oversight, we have to trust our law enforcement staff and, and leadership to monitor and manage the distribution of that data. And, and it's and really no different than any other tool that we use. Right. As <laughs> we were showing earlier, that the laptops that we carry in our cars give us access to the world, literally, and the people that live in it. But it's no different than anything we carry on our duty belts. It's a tool. It's a tool we use, and this is a tool that we'd use every day, whether it's coming our way or not. And once again, there is a human component to it. Trust the people that you instill to protect you and take care of you. Are there issue children out there? Yes, there are. I'm not kidding. It's no different than doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs. There's always a bad apple in the group. 
Yeah, unfortunately, that's the world, world we live in. But this is a tool that we could use to increase our job. I think one of the other items that I asked for when we were meeting was a, a quarterly report on the usage so that we don't just grant this approval and then a year later it's another budget item that gets mixed into thousands of other lines of budgetary compliance <clears> in that <throat> months long process. But we didn't agree on what the criteria are that we want to report on yet that they'll be they have a dashboard that they provide for transparency that it can be derivative of that but I didn't want to make the decision for everybody on what we need reported to us but just in a more general sense are, are we okay with if we approve this getting a quarterly review of the usage in the sharing and what's being done with the data to ensure compliance we've talked about them managing compliance operationally but for us to have at least some visibility and oversight periodically Right, that's how you keep people in line is you check in with them. I felt like that was a good compromise for us where we're not signing a check and hoping it all goes well. No, definitely needs to have that. Checks and balances, I don't think. Any, no, no program works without knowing what it's doing. So. Exactly. And I believe if we do go with it, decide to go with this program, that it should be a line item. Yeah, we talked about that as so well, breaking it there, out. So it's budget, not it's just item. mixed in with, you know, computer technology and, or, or computers or special investigation. But it actually has its own line item, so it's, it's easy for hidden, access yeah. for everybody to see. Does Flock provide a good data type of uh, forms for you guys to pull? Uh, they provide a whole uh, public transparency portal, uh, and they provide that free as part of the, the system. Um, and Hector, I don't know if you can explain further on. Yeah, certainly. So we've built in a um, uh, robust auditing tool. I mean, I think the mayor kind of alluded to the policy that, um, that the department has in place. So that policy is going to require um, periodic audits. Our system will allow um, the police department um, to um, every single search that is performed is there is a requirement that they enter in a search reason. The policy is going to require a case. Um, we the the audit will show the user, the time, all of the criteria that they searched, all of the cameras, and that um, lives on forever. Uh, so that your department can pull them at any time. Um, that also goes for any cameras that um, or any data that you share with other departments, and then. Um, uh, the other side is uh, what the public um, can see at the at the you know on a computer at any time, which is a transparency portal. The transparency portal will allow the public to read the policy, also see who the department is sharing with, how many um, searches they're performing, um, among other criteria, and that's updated daily. <clears throat> Thank you, Hector. So you guys would be able to pull this report maybe every quarter to bring that to present to the board? Is that what you're asking, Mayor Yeah, Broca? maybe as a baseline, but then after we take a look at the first one, there may be other things that we are uniquely interested in based on our related crime statistics. There may be other factors that we may be more interested in, some less. I, I, just, I didn't want to make a wholesale decision without opening it up for discussion. And we won't know for sure until we see the baseline transparency report. You know, then we can cherry pick from that list to see what's applicable to us. What I can say is that many um, elected officials, such as yourself, um, what you'll look at um, in addition to kind of that um, transparency portion, making sure that um, you know the technology is being used appropriately, is um, what kind of crimes are being solved, right? And um, they'll put that into buckets many times is what I see cities do. So crimes that you can attach a dollar sign to, vehicles, stolen vehicles recovered, um, other types of, um, you know, um, things that you can quantify. And then the other side is the fact that this helps solve amber, amber alerts, um, homicides, crimes that you really can't attach a, a number to, but are very important. And so um, <laughs> typically that's what I'll see uh, councils uh, kind of weighing efficacy as. I think we also need to be careful about distinguishing between causation and correlation. Some of the data in the presentation is it, it's displayed as being cause and effect. We put these cameras in place and these are the statistical outcomes. 
and the, they're actually not causal. They're correlations. They're best guess based on the data at hand and et cetera, et cetera. Some of the individuals that are noted in the, in the slide deck, they were asked follow-up questions um, by two magazines. Wired Magazine did an article in 2019 and asked follow-up. Um, one of the slides, for example, Chief Van Hooser, who makes a statement in the slide deck that it's been tremendously effective and helps to solve crime. And when they, Wired Magazine asked him a follow-up, he had to say, and I quote, to make it very clear, we're not 100% positive that flock cameras were the difference. But you only get that information when you dive a little deeper. My point is, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the data that's presented in the slides but I trust in the SOAP Police Department to use the tool effectively within the constraints that we're gonna help build through policy and through reporting and compliance. And if we don't like what we're seeing in terms of our results basis, or we're not comfortable with the data sharing at some point in the future, we are effectively reserving the right to get out of it every year as part of the budgetary process. I, again, Given that there's no judicial oversight on a case-by-case -case basis, this is the best we can do to find that happy medium. It's, I think, Chief Kate, you said it earlier, it's just a tool. It's more about how the people who are responsible for it use it. So I have to trust the people. How would that fall into the two-year contract requirement? <laughs> can it be canceled each year? Where does the two-year portion of it come into play? We would be committed for the first two years. Um, if, if the tool's simply not working for us, if we're not solving crime, um, at the end of that two years, then we could just cancel. Yeah, you're right. So it's annualized after the first two. Sorry, I misspoke. Yeah. But still, there, there's a way out, you know, if, I mean, yeah. if, if it doesn't work. It, or if, if we don't like it a year, we turn it off. Right. I mean, it, well, yeah. You still pay the 15000 for the next yeah, year. For it and not long. use it. I mean, it's... Yeah. If the tool doesn't work, then, then yeah. And, and I'm most comfortable with knowing that other parties, whether it be external law enforcement or other agencies, I, while I was doing my research, there were some, like, I don't know what to call them, shock and awe type examples of how it could hypothetically be used. Immigration, some states that may be anti or pro-abortion, et cetera, et cetera, because that's in the news lately that we're depending on the SILT Police Department to authorize access, full stop. That it doesn't happen without their approval. So those, those external actors, th these are our gatekeepers. And I'm more okay with the platform because I trust them. Right. That, that to me is the difference maker. Yeah. We also have control over whether or not we keep the data after 30 days. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's gonna be done on a case-by-case -case basis. So there may be some of the images that they need because cases are pending. Well, here it says it has to be connected to an active investigation. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have no choice in the matter. It has to be an well, investigation. But, it, but it's there, it's, it's still PD's decision because according to Flock, the <clears> system <throat> will delete it yeah, unless default, they yeah. say, we're gonna download it and keep it in our own case file. Yeah, if, if we need to retain anything because of an investigation, because we did get a stolen vehicle, obviously we would want to keep that image and put that into evidence um, as part of the case. So those images we would keep longer. But all the other stuff that we don't actually use and need, that would automatically get deleted in 30 days. So using um, $16,000 out of your budget, you're going to, you're going to, there's going to be sixteen thousand dollars in another area of your budget that you're not going to be able to get. Are you so you're, you you would say that this sixteen thousand dollar tool would be worth that negative um, on the other parts of your budget and other parts of resources that you want? I think it's worthwhile as a as a crime fighting tool um, and how much benefit it provides to the public. Um, uh, when Sergeant Baker from uh, Spear uh, from the task force was here uh, during the first meeting, uh, he gave some examples of how beneficial the flock cameras have been just for the sheriff's office. Uh, I believe he said that they recovered $1.5 million in stolen property. Um, and that's just from having access to the Glenwood cameras. 
Um, that's how much it's benefited an agency that works countywide, just having the cameras in Glenwood. Um, so I think the $16,000, uh, what it would cost us the initial year, um, I, I believe that that would be uh, money well spent. And we can trim back on, on some other things to well, make to that happen, yeah, to sir. stay within our budget. I just going to say to piggyback on on Trustee Flores' comment: <clears throat> Could this, could uh, Veil Board funding, could this fall under that? No, no? Uh, okay. that's for for victims gotcha. and <clears throat> victims only. I, I just I just wanted to clarify because you know you guys have bought equipment question, in the past. So, and I see Trustee Hannerhan's you know view on privacy, but. You know, like I said before, a drone you know, could violate your privacy, you know, more than this could because these cameras are fixed. They don't go anywhere, you know, because like, like the guy reading water meters with the town's drone, he could be snooping on all of us for all we know. See, so you could, so th there could be other ways people could be, you know, violating, you know, our rights and privacy and all that. Yep. Worse and, than this. And based on, on my own research, uh, I think it was 23 states have privacy policies in place. So it's, if Flock isn't doing it, well, they're doing it in 23 states now because they have to be to be compliant. I think that number is going up, not down. I think privacy is becoming more and more of an issue. We see it online. And now we're discussing it in real life. <clears throat> I think if they're not compliant or they're found to not be compliant, they'll be bankrupted because they'll be sued off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, a good point you chief made was that uh, the tools that they have in their vehicle, you can access other people's data. You know what I mean? You can you they know connect. everything about anyone in there. They showed me earlier. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I, they don't know anything about me. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Not really that much more. <clears throat> I don't feel like it's more taking away more privacy from the citizens. Yeah, I, I have serious reservations about the technology, the, the lack of Fourth Amendment protections, the lack of judicial oversight, but, but I have to defer to the people using it. If I trust them, I worry less about the tool. Mm -hmm. That's the place I'm in. I feel like it can be valuable under certain circumstances. Well, that's the thing with any tool, though, is it's only as good as the operator. Yep. If they're they're tra they're training and their oversight and their the the way that they're going to use it correctly or not correctly, um, no, you said with having authorization, only certain people can allow authorization. What if those people aren't available due to our staffing issues and stuff? What, as far as you talk about being at our fingertips, but then it's not always at your fingertips immediately because of authorization, having to wait for an authorization or something like that. just part of living up here well and i understand um, that i'm just it, it's just a concern it, no most of it's a cell phone away the only two people that would have permissions <clears throat> would be lieutenant grombeck and myself um if somebody else needs something if they can't get a hold of one of us they can get a hold of the other one we've always got our work leashes with us so it's a matter of picking up the phone saying hey maker's got a missing person possible suicidal heading your way, can you guys check check your cameras? Or hey, we've got a drug car coming our way, could you guys send, let's have access to the cameras. And we can make it temporary for, for you know, the duration of whatever case they're working with, or Spear, or Glenwood, or Garfield County. Are the authorization, County. is it specifically looking for just an individual vehicle, or is it just everything that comes through during that time period? It could be either one, um, but once that's said and done with, you know, Meek or Craig, um, they really don't need access to <coughs> cameras in the metropolis of Silk, Colorado. Um, but we work with Glenwood's flocks, um, and as we discussed earlier, for whatever reason, they always end up in silt. <laughs> Either stop, get fuel, um, munchies, take a break, or just try to get off the interstate as quickly as they can because they know that people are looking for them. 
And if we can catch them coming into town and catch them before they start anything. It's still, once again, it's just another, another tool to try to do better. And we need human oversight because the cameras aren't perfect. You know, at the last, during the last meeting or the last discussion, I asked for any statistics on accuracy or failure rates of the images. There weren't any available at the time. I'm assuming there still aren't. But you can find cases online where people are incorrectly pulled over, arrested, blah, 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 um, based on an image from a flock camera. That, that's why we need the human gatekeepers as the, as the last stop or the <coughs> last check before a, a police action is taken or a law enforcement action is taken. And we had talked about this earlier. Um, it's not the, can't, the flock system hits the plate we pull Murray Yankum to jail. The flock system hits the plate. The officer gets in behind the vehicle, confirms the plate that they're in front of with dispatch, that this is the proper vehicle, and to confirm it. And at which time, we then stop the vehicle and do with what we need to do. So can you, with the system, would you, you're, can you retroactively look for, like say there's a vehicle that's found in rifle that had stolen merchandise in it, and there were break-ins um, on the 25th, the 23rd, and the 19th in Silt that happened overnight. Could, would they be able to retroactively look back and look and see if that vehicle's plates went in and out of Silt those days? Correct. Yep, you would be able that's to put that. Stuff that would... Exactly, that's that's how it's beneficial to us, um, because then we can help try to get uh, the victims in our community their property back. Um, but you would just put the license plate number into the dashboard, do a search, and that would tell us over the last thirty days. Correct. How yeah. many times it came and went? Yep, and which cameras it alerted to. So Garfield County is basically going to have the interstate covered then, right? Um, they so basically for us this would benefit town correct yep main street is about what it, okay. yep this is a team effort it's it wouldn't benefit just our town yes it would absolutely i have no question on that but uh, just like glenwood's flock cameras help benefit silt and garfield county is going to help benefit everybody else we we work together as a team we're spread out too thin. We, everybody's too small to be everywhere. These cameras cut down a lot of that guesswork. Are Newcastle and Rifle looking at being part of this team? Uh, Newcastle, I don't know. I'd heard um, a rumor, for lack of better words, that uh, Rifle was getting on board with it also. I've not confirmed that. I've just no, I just just curious. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's <clears throat> either way, but... I mean, it's one of those, the more data points you have, if you're going to be using it, if you're going to use the tool, the more collection points you have for the data, the better. Or not, depending on your opinion on that. Depending on what side. Of <laughs> depending on how well you check, the, so, how well you trust the gatekeepers. Yeah. Um, so for Hector, if a camera goes down, how long is it until Flock has it repair? Um Within 48 hours, uh, we will uh, send out a technician which who is local to uh, Colorado. So within 48 hours, they'll be dispatched or the camera will be repaired within 48 hours? So it's, it depends on the issue because many times uh, what we will do is, let's say, a remote restart. Um, there's many issues that um, can can be troubleshooted. Um virtually um if if within 48 hours um that's not possible or before then if we identify um that that it's not possible to uh, fix remotely then we will schedule a technician who's local to your area to uh fix uh to either replace the camera or um fix any issue that that may have occurred okay i would like to if we go ahead and move forward with this direct staff to 
in the contract have a number of days until that thing gets fixed. I mean, if they say, oh, we can't fix it remotely and we'll get a guy out there in three months, why are we paying for a camera? It, it is within, so we'll schedule within 48 hours um, to have someone um, in, in the town. So within the week um, is our goal. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. certainly it's something that they can talk about in SLA with um, our uh, sales team and, and the contracting folks. Um, I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I don't want to pay for something that's not not working. I mean, that that doesn't make any sense. Definitely. Um, and then I'd also like to see in the contract a maximum increase price after two years so that it doesn't go. Year three is 30 grand. And we, we talked about, LT and I talked about that earlier. If we get into this and the company explodes and takes off um, with price increase above and beyond what's reasonable, everything's going to go up. Everything has gone up. But if it starts getting out of hand with us, we back out of, we back out of the system. I just think, like, with our trash contract, we worked that number maximum increase before and so we don't have to be held hostage in year, year three making a decision. Is it worth spending twenty five grand to keep doing it? Yeah. If, if, and <clears throat> no, we had talked about that earlier, and that, once again, we're within year to year after our first two years. If the price really starts climbing, we just back out. So we're locked in 16 for the first year, 15 for the second year, and then locked in for sure for those prices? Correct, yep. And then if we do go forward with that, when would they be installed or how soon? Uh, Pector, do you have any info on that? Yeah, so the um, installation um, varies, but it's usually about three months uh, for the total installation. That can be a lot quicker if there's, um, you know, depending on where the cameras are located. Let's say it's a DOT, um, state DOT right away. Obviously, that's a longer permitting process. Um, but the ones that say there's roads that are in, in town, um, those would be installed much uh, sooner. Hector, are you, uh, your billing cycle is a calendar year or year of installation to year of installation? Uh, it's based on in- installation. Okay, thank you. And I guess, do we have the staff to follow these leads anybody who's on duty Excuse me. and um and if we're on call <clears throat> um, it'll alert county or rifle which way they're heading into town and out of town so those so if it's going to alert county then who's saying yes to give them that data or if it's in the system So we just talked about how if if we want to give that data to somebody, there has to be clearance by one of you two. But now we're Correct. talking an automatic hit. We'll send it to. But that that's for searching past info. Okay. So so the yes the, the authorization is the only search past info. Correct. Yep. Okay. Uh, and so if a stolen vehicle alerts on one of the cameras, it's going to alert the agencies that have access to flock so glenwood springs the sheriff's office and us if it gets approved so it's gonna but can we control that where we say if it hits on our camera it doesn't automatically share it you you can and so just i I think it's based there's two things here right it's based on the policy and so your policy is stating that your department will assess sharing and, and share on an um as need basis. Uh, but when it comes to, from what I'm hearing, 
um, when it comes to sharing hot list alerts, that may be something that you're sharing with um, neighboring jurisdictions, right? But you can turn that off and on. The benefit to sharing with your neighboring jurisdictions is, of course, that collaboration um, because they're obviously moving in in the regional road network, right? And so um, it's important for the sheriff to know when it's heading in their direction in some way and vice versa. Um, but that's something that's, again, fully controllable by your department, Um Typically, what we do see is departments will share kind of in their metro area, right? And so many of the cities in Denver where um, most cities have um, flock cameras, um, they're sharing regionally, right? Because the, the at, at least with the hot list, right? Because uh, th that helps um, them follow up on, on any stolen vehicles that may be entering their town or leaving. So from when we sign this contract, when will the, how long will the system take to get up and running? Um, it should be um, uh, up to three months. So my question is, we signed the contract. So if it takes three months to install this, do we start paying after that three months? Or is that, you know what I mean? Otherwise, the first year we'd lose three months. Yeah, it'll, it's it's upon validation of your final camera. So it'd be the time is once it's up and yeah, running. Yeah, once it's up and running, okay. that would be. I, I was just, might just want to make sure. Cycle, yeah. And then are you able to uh, share with uh, communities that don't participate in flock right away? Like if rifle chooses out to opt out, <clears throat> would it benefit us to get, give them the data because there's a car to their way with a guy and a gun or something? And th the flock gets, it's not it comes up on our computers and phones, but it goes to the dispatch center. So yeah. it's aired out. Um, they won't have the pictures of, of the vehicle or the plate or any of the additional information that that the people with the system have, but they're going to air it out countywide. So would they be monitored on city property along the road? Are they I'm sorry, be monitored I don't understand. On city property or private property? The cameras. City. No, they would be focused on the on the road and capturing where the um, mounted at. That's going to be on the city property, right? Correct. Yeah. I think I just have to echo Mayor Pro Tem's statement that I, I have my my doubts with the the data that Flock is collecting and what they may may do with it, but I wholeheartedly stand behind our department to do right with the data that they receive, and I think every tool that our police department has benefits the citizens of Silt and the surrounding area. So um, I would be in favor of going ahead and giving this a shot yeah I'm, I'm fine with it yes I'm on board I, I had my reservations at the beginning and then having this meeting and actually dissecting it it definitely seems worthwhile and and I don't believe that we're really giving up much more or there's going to be that uh, privacy issue being taken advantage here um, so yeah I'm on board Trustee Poston? I think I did my statement at the beginning. Make sure you're still in. You didn't change your mind. I'm still in. If we, nothing, we, I'm we more. We didn't talk you out of it with all of your yet. questions. <laughs> no, I love that everybody brought their concerns and uh, point of view because what we are trying to do is help protect the uh, sealed citizens, but also help protect their privacy the best way that we can. Um, it was reassuring to know how much of the system is capturing, which is basically the usage information. Um, and yes, in any form of work, there could be issues, accounting, banking, police, you know, all different IT. Um, hospitals have HIPAA, right, to protect their privacy and with their policies. So, um, on the state level, I would think, just like Mayor Henry, oh, Pro Tem uh, Henryham said, that the state has policies for these companies to operate. If not, they would be bankrupt or something to that that side. Uh, so there are policies out there as well to help protect uh, with some of their data. And I like to see all of the uh, checks and balances between all the ranges 
uh, within the department of the police uh, to get those authorizations. So this is just a summary of what I've heard tonight. Uh, and it just really helped me uh, reassure that this is a tool that the chief and lieutenant have presented several times. And each time they present it, I get that that's something that they would find it useful. That's, and I've been 100% behind them as far as trusting and also listening to them when they come to us to ask for something. Um, yes, we do want to take that evaluation um, and ask as many questions as we can. But um, my feeling from them as far as usage and uh, how they feel about the program has always been really strong. And I, I support them just like we all Thank do. Thank you. And yeah, after two years, we can reevaluate. Yeah. It was not long term. You're on, yeah. on board? Oh, I'd like short. to see in the contract, though, the repair, like you said, because, you know, all of a sudden it's a week now. It could be up to a week. And, you know, you said I'd like to see some verbiage in there that, yes, here to here. Yeah, or I just think we all know that Denver, you can get something done in a week. Western Colorado, you might not get something done in a week. I know. So, <laughs> no. That's yeah, right. I would just like to see a clause in there about, you know, if the camera's down for X number of days, then it's uh, X number of dollars off the yeah SLAs so. usually cover that type of a thing it does whether it's physically broken or, or something electronically is faulty or it's the software SLAs usually cover that but we that. they definitely have to be in the contract in the contract and yeah. enforced for sure and price ceiling right mayor I mean I would I would like to see a <clears throat> maximum increase but I don't know their business model if they're you know like the chief said they're small now mm -hmm. in two years are they gonna be big and they think it's worth 50 grand a month, so. Well, if it's big, their cost should go down as soon as you get it, I mean, cheaper. you would think, but. <laughs> okay. um, I did two little questions, so hopefully they're super quick. Does it catch motorcycles? Yes. And does it take pictures of cars even if they don't have a rear license plate? Or does it get yes. so it So you, then you could technically, you, you can do a search for a red Honda that you might not have a plate for just to see. Is, is that correct? Or do correct. you have to search for a plate number? Correct. Um, you could punch in um, make model and within the, like the last two weeks. Um, and they'll give you a red Honda that all the red Hondas that came through Silt okay. or... What, what was it earlier? It was a blue... Uh, blue Ford pickup truck, truck and there yeah. were over 11,000. A blue pickup truck. <laughs> but at, that was in Glenwood. I don't remember the time frame. For a whole it, month. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't enough where you could say, that's them. That's the one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I think we had the discussion. I think we're all on board. Um, so it is an action item, so I don't know if we have a, if we just need a yes. Administrator, how would you like us to? I, I don't think it's a, you necessarily need to vote on it. I think okay. just some, I think there's definitely sounds consensus. like there's some consensus, consensus and no strong opinions to the contrary. So I think we just go forward with it. Okay. okay. Sh should we record everybody saying yes or no? Just well, so I think that that like the contract and stuff. Where we it's an well, just item. It's a already point of clarification is is was this in the budget that we approved? Yeah, it was not. No because we weren't sure where, which direction we were going to go at the time. But um, I will work with the numbers within our budget, our current budget, to make it work. Okay. Perhaps we could have a consensus that everybody's on board so that we can move forward. Okay. How about, um, I will make a motion that we direct our uh, Police Chief and Lieutenant to move forward with the contract with Flock for the installations of the license plate reading cameras. Maybe we second say it. town staff. Town staff. Okay. No second it. All right. So we have a motion by the mayor to approve town staff to enter into negotiations and contracts with Flock, seconded by Trustee Britton. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? 
Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A grueling question and answer thing for this whole thing, but yeah. thank you guys for sticking with us. And yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for all your input. <coughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Hector. Hector. <clears throat> all right. Next item on the agenda is the Rislinda amended. Uh, preliminary plan public hearing and it, we have a continuation requested till January 22nd, 2024. Is there anything you'd like to hit on or just continue? No. Nope. Okay. Excuse me. No objections to continuing it, I think. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item up is the discussion of the lease of town land agreement. Uh, to support Garfield County's fiber and infrastructure project. And I'll turn this over to Administrator Lane. I think this can be pretty quick, too. You'll all, uh, you all know that we've been working really hard to get this uh, broadband service up and running uh, with, with GARCO uh, as running as the point on this. Uh, you'll recall the original grant was for uh, Glenwood Springs and Rifle to have uh, this uh, improved broadband service. Uh, they got an additional grant that allowed Parachute, Newcastle, and Silt to jump on board. We've been moving this thing uh, forward ever since. Um, and uh, Garfield County, by the way, their, uh, uh, their uh, fin finance manager, finance director, is the project manager, manager, and she's been driving the train and doing a great job of making this happen. There are all kinds of thick and thin, especially that where, where, relate, where it related to CDOT, some issues with them. But we are moving forward. And as I look back on this particular issue, um, we probably uh, got it a little bit backwards uh, in that we probably should have come to you and said, hey, uh, we're going to have a lease with Garfield County to uh, have a little piece of ground in our, in our, uh, uh, in our shop yard with a building that they're going to put in, and we're going to have a lease with them. Uh, but we have mentioned that a few times. We've talked about the fact that this uh, fiber is going to go up 8th Street uh, right into uh, our backyard there at uh, the shops. It's already done. Building's there, ready to go. This lease just kind of makes it all official. Uh, so our job on this would be just to uh, uh, kind of let you know what the, uh, that, that that's going to that, that's gonna happen. If you approve the language that's in the packet, then we're going to bring it to the Board of County Commissioners. If they approve it, we're going to bring it back and stick it in a consent agenda for your approval in the near future. Uh, the contract is for $1 per year, and it requires the county to maintain the building, all of its components, and they're going to pay for the electri their electricity and their gas should they need any. Uh, if the electricity goes out, there's a generator there that'll run the uh, the program <clears throat> if uh, if necessary. And if you have any questions that I can't answer, I'm going to point at Trey, okay. or <laughs> we'll say we can come back and get those answered. So is that? Yeah, oh, and actually, uh, we may have an attorney on the line too. He might be able to help us uh, if there's anything legal on there. Is the fiber already landed in the C and L? Mm -hmm. It's not landed in the building yet. It's landed outside the building. They're waiting on a couple of components that should be here in the next week or so, and then it'll get pulled into the building. So in the past, there's been some brief talk about relocating the town shop somewhere else. I'm guessing that this would preclude, uh, cement the town shop being where it's gonna be now? No, <clears throat> it's not taking up that much space. I think you have a drawing in the packet you can see it's just in one little area of the shop. Well, I understand that. What I'm saying though is that it makes the shop building need to be there now, and that area, that property can be used for something else easily without relocating all that. Yes, but Sorry, we I misunderstood the the uh, the bit. The, I don't have a problem with the town shop being where it is. I'm just the, if the shop confirmed. were to move somewhere, the building could stay. Yeah, in yeah, the this, park this or in the parking lot. Yeah, I understand. Adjacent. What I'm saying is, is basically, yes. if we wanted to make it into a soccer field in the future, we couldn't now. The, the building is we small enough. Yeah. The, this building is very small. It's 10 12, by 12 by 10 or something like that. I forget. Yeah. 
It's not very big. And it's out in the yeah. And it's yeah, on the edge. You wouldn't put a soccer field where the building. Well, I understand. That I'm just mostly just confirming, just kind of looking at it as. I think it cements that area being used for what it's used for now and not something else in the future. No, it could be used for something else because, I mean, that area is small. You could work around it easily if you wanted to put something else in. I think in 20, 30 years that that area really wants to be a park. Yes. <laughs> so. I agree. We, we may not be ready to talk about that tonight, but <laughs> at some point. So this, yeah, some point it's a soccer field. This Justin, I promise. The one that building is strictly fiber. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Is this uh, fiber that we own or are in contract with? Or how does that work? I don't know. We don't the, need to open a big discussion. I'm, yeah, the yeah, fibers like, ran to the building, and then we have to come up with the internet provider that's going to take it from the building and give it to the community. Okay. It's yep. landed at the building. And there will be some discussion. I think Jeff's been in some meetings where Newcastle Silt Parachute have been looking at one provider to group together to get more leverage and better service in the area if all three of us had the same provider. So there's sense. still a lot there to will. go. Sorry, go ahead, please. No, I was going to say there's just, there's still some negotiations and some stuff to be done before the high-speed fiber, broadband, whatever is put into the community. Right. There will be other e network equipment that will be co-located in the space. So, for example, if a cellular company wanted to use that fiber as their backhaul to improve cellular service, hello, are they listening? Um, <laughs> they, they would put their equipment in that facility and cross connect to the fiber anybody who's managing a local isp whether it's wired or wireless is going to have to install their equipment in that space and then cross connect to the fiber and i did mention in my um my staff report that uh, the county has put out some requests for interest and they've received five uh, in, uh, letters of interest and so uh, I spoke with Jamaica Watts last week, and uh, we're, the group is uh, the group of towns is will be looking at ways to interview these people to kind of figure out uh, who's the best fit and whether it should be one or more. Uh, none of those decisions have been made at this point, and we would fully expect the boards to be involved in those decisions. So if that's my question, if we're leasing this to the county, does the town still control who and what goes in there? I wouldn't say we control, no. It's, it's uh, you know, I, honestly, uh, I don't know the answer to that fully, but um, I think it's going to be a, uh, a shared decision of who we invite in to provide. I mean, if 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 Silt if if uh, Parachute Rifle and Garfield County decide on company ISP A to come in to their places, and Silt says no way, we don't like those. We want ISP B. Then I think we would be uh, fully within our rights and encouraged to do that. Okay, that's just what I want to make sure we're not well, giving we're, up our ability to potentially go with ISP B instead of A if everyone else does. Mm -hmm. That's not the intent and I will make sure with the attorneys that uh, that that's not in there. Most ISPs want the economy of scale so that they, they will induce us to do it if we're operating collectively or looking at the proposals they'll I see, I say see a reason yeah, where their costs of installation and management go down and those costs will be passed on to the customers. Right. It's unlikely that an ISP is going to willingly go outside that standard. They just love to silt get, so, to get much. Silt. so much. They want to yeah, give silt a great unless deal. Unless it's Derek Wireless, in which case all bets are off. Exactly. That's what I, that's, I mean, that's my concern. Maybe Derek Wireless wants to come in there and if we are leasing it to the building or the county, they say no because we used and even, and even then, if we're going through it as, as a group, we still have a vote, if you will, a, a say in the outcome. It, it's not singular control, control, but we get to contribute to the decision. Right. Excellent. 
Uh, I mean, I know the it says the generator is quiet, but how often is the backup generator going to run? Only when the power goes off. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> sorry. No, seriously, because uh, no, backup generators <laughs> periodically need to run. Well, just it'll, to it'll, keep, it'll test. It has uh, to. Yeah, up. that's but what I mean. What once a month, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I believe it's either once a month, possibly once a week. Okay. I just I just curious and didn't know if you heard it and didn't you know because that house close I didn't know that, if they, yeah I haven't it. heard it run yet okay no, they're so quiet these new generators are so quiet, so quiet yeah. 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 Hear it at all. yeah and okay. I'm guessing you right. wouldn't run it to test it in the middle of the night if it's gonna test it's gonna test it, it tests time usually yeah. yeah I think ours test like you can set it to like test at noon or something middle of the daytime in the middle of the week okay so it doesn't test on the weekends and evenings gotcha. and yeah whatever. then that was my only yeah. you know question <clears> or concern you know just not to Disturb the neighbors over there. It's a good question. I was surprised how big it is. It's yeah. a it's a pretty good size uh, generator for such a small building. So if there's a lot of electrical it runs on natural gas in there, yeah, it runs on natural gas. Okay. This is an action item. Anyone want to make a motion? It'd be to. Uh, there's always language in staff is uh, just recommending the approval of the lease agreement language. Page is that on? It's on the summary. 104 in the packet. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I move to recommend approval of <coughs> town land lease agreement to support Garfield County's fiber infrastructure project. Second. Okay. Uh, motion by Mayor Pro Tem Hanrahan to approve the lease agreement language for the town land agreement to support Garfield County fiber infrastructure project. Seconded by Trustee Poston. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Mayor, I have a point of order. Can we go back and revisit the Rislenda? We need to have a uh, motion to continue the public hearing, please. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to uh, continue the, for the continuation of the Rislante amended pre preliminary plan public hearing until January 22nd, 2024. I'll second. Uh -huh. uh, motion by Trustee Seifert to continue the Roslinda admitted uh, preliminary plan public hearing until January 22nd, 2024, seconded by Trustee Clausen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Yep, sorry about that one, Sheila. That's okay. All right. uh, next up is the November 2023 financial report. Turn this over to Treasurer Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Um, so this is for the month of November with that 92% uh, of the year has passed. We are doing very well with our um, sales tax. We're almost right at what we got last year and we still have a month left to go. So we're doing quite well with that um, sitting at about 110%. Um, use tax, we're at 121% of what we anticipated on getting, and we're right on track with our trash, uh, water, wastewater, and irrigation fees for the, the time of the year. Um, we are a little low in um, revenues for uh, the uh, water treatment plant, but there were grants that we thought we were going to to um, use, but didn't end up using that those funds. So we'll get that uh, revenue next year whenever we do use those uh, funds and then get the reimbursement for that. Um, Silt Housing Authority, we're a little behind on the revenues, but December, we will have both November and December's rental um, deposited um, in December. So you'll see that catch up. And I'll answer any questions you may have. Any question? No, nothing for me. Numbers look no. great. Looks good. Looks good, yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Uh, next item on the agenda is an administrator and staff reports. Okay, a couple things I wanted to just highlight in uh, my report. Um, I guess the main, well, a couple things here. Um, <clears throat> I, I had uh, said earlier that we were going to move forward spending about $75,000 in uh, the budget for renovating the garage base to do some kind of expansion either of community development or, uh, or the police department. We kind of talked about that a little bit. We're going to move forward with that. <clears throat> and then I was reminded uh, by the fire chief that uh, last week that we had a conversation about uh, talking about a public safety facility, which would include uh, the police department. So um, I'm going to take a step <coughs> back from, from that uh, because I think we need to fully uh, investigate that before we just, uh, and, and this is, is my fault. I, I, I was uh, wanting to get something done and uh, <laughs> realized that I hadn't, uh, hadn't dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's yet. So we're, we're uh, our group uh, of town employees who are involved in this as well as the fire, a um, couple of uh, the fire district folks are gonna meet tomorrow morning and, and kind of put together a, a list of alternatives. <clears throat> some of the square footage that we think we could push into or redevelop uh, would, would be some of the alternatives along with some kind of a public safety uh, facility which would all which would be an all-new uh, facility uh, probably on the location of the current uh, fire station 61 yeah. is that what, uh, station 61 here on Main Street in Silt so we're gonna uh, be talking about that a little bit I don't know how long exactly that'll take us to kind of put something together we're, we've allocated about two hours tomorrow to br uh, brainstorm it uh, but what I would like to, to suggest is if we could get uh, one or two uh, uh, trustees, board members to uh, volunteer to not necessarily come tomorrow, but to uh, come at a future meeting to kind of hear uh, sort of the alternatives, maybe give us some insight from, a, you know, from your standpoint, uh, it would be, you know, maybe helpful. Or maybe we would want to do it to a full board uh, with no intermediate step. Either way is fine with me, but I wanted to just kind of throw that that suggestion out there if, uh, if, if that might make sense to anybody. Is that kind of a follow-up to the meeting we had that with the chief and that before? Yeah, yeah, because we have, um, I think, Jerry, you were there, but was, yeah. were, was there another trustee at that meeting? I don't, I don't recall one. No, I think it was I was there, and, and then we've talked. Yeah, was Leaf was there. Yeah, yeah, we had both fire district and, uh, fire district and, folk, and yeah. police folks, and and our so and I Trey was there. Yeah, Trey was maybe there, yeah. Amy. So, uh, I mean, I'd I'd volunteer, but I I kind of think something of that magnitude might be better, you know, if the whole board is involved. That's, that's well, everybody's going to everybody's going to get the same briefing. We just want to kind of sort of troubleshoot it, make sure we're covering all the bases gotcha. that uh, trustees would like to tr uh, have. But I'm fine to do it that way too. So, do you want to do it? Sure. Okay. okay. I'm just not available tomorrow. No, we wouldn't do it tomorrow. We want to, I know he just said that. Tomorrow's right. just a rust. Yeah. We got to get the rust off. When would for you sure. catch anything you do it? Um, maybe a month out or so. I'll go. Okay. As well, too, if you want to. I can get there with enough advance notice. Yeah, me too. Oh, well, we can't have three. We can't have, we three. Can have two. I'll be an alternate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Flores and Clausen, Hanrahan is an alternate. Coming off the bench as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> you got those names down? Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right here. 
All right, that's great. Um, FMLD Awards Luncheon is coming up on the 19th, I think. They've sent an invitation. We passed it along in the board packet. Uh, it's from 11 to 1 um, in Glenwood Springs, if anyone wants to join in the fun. That's at Mortgage Commons. Um, we just need to get an RSVP to them pretty soon. This is where they um, announced the awards for last year. Last and year, and this is where they announced the grantee of the year. Right. That, that's extra $1,000, I think. And this is where they give us our plaques that hang all over the wall in there. So it's, a, it's kind of a big deal. But if anybody has that day open and would, or, or that time open, 11, that to, again, 11 to 1, Friday, January 19th. I think Trey's going to go, and I think I'm going to go to IMTPR that day. And Amy's going. And Amy's going to go, too. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be gone. Well, let us know in the next uh, 24 hours or so so we can uh, RSVP for you to go because that's coming up. I don't, I don't even know if they had a... Yes, they did. It's did they? Um, today at 3 o'clock? The 15th. <laughs> okay. The 15th. So we have a little more than 24 hours. 24 hours okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, and then in your... At your seat today, you found a traffic packet, I'm, gonna, I'm calling it. Uh, these are the uh, traffic counter traffic counter information and some analysis done by Derek Walter, our, uh, our town engineer, on some of the traffic speeds. There's also some information about some of the low-hanging fruit that, uh, our, uh, that the town is working with uh, to do some of these uh, Proactive measures about uh, we've talked about these sidewalk or these crosswalks and so forth and so on and uh, then then in the back of that packet you'll see some speed data and some of how it's analyzed. I'd like to point out in the very last page of that packet is an explanation as to what the 85th percentile refers to that's in the packet. <clears throat> um, I, I kind of rushed everybody to get this done. Uh, and to you, even though we're not, I don't plan on having a conversation about it tonight, but I wanted to get this to you because I know it, uh, there was a lot of interest in this, but we just haven't had the time to, to really put together, uh, I think, a, a discussion item with you and a presentation. But we are planning on coming back with a lot more, uh, more information as those cameras are deployed, or not cameras, yeah, cameras on the brain, don't I? Uh, those Radars. radar monitors are, are uh, deployed and we can do a little better uh, job of, 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 um, of uh, I think, responding to some of your questions uh, that we'll have uh, then. We'll either do a work session or, a, or if we have a, a light meeting, uh, we'll do it during a regular meeting. Uh, either either the end of March or the first part of April is what kind of what we're shooting for to make sure we get that information out. And then, um, uh, and if you have questions on any of that stuff, don't hesitate to reach out to me, and I'll be glad to put you uh, in touch with either uh, Trey or uh, Derek or Chief Kite, and we can try to get some of those some of that information. Uh, or uh, we can just answer it when it when the meeting comes up in April. Um, last but not least uh, on my list, and then we can uh, take some board comments, and then we'll go into executive session to talk about this uh, this uh, real estate, some of these real estate items. Um, the last thing I have uh, for you tonight is. Uh, I'm here tonight to announce my retirement. I uh, plan to uh, ride off into the sunset. Actually, I don't even know. I, I don't have a speech, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I uh, I alerted the, the staff today, uh, this afternoon, that uh, my time has come, and uh, I'm setting my last day as, as March 15th. Uh, I had a conversation with the mayor uh, right before the meeting, and told him that I am uh, uh, willing to 
work with the board to the extent that you wish me to to help with whatever transition and uh, i know it's kind of early to talk about that at this moment but um i'm certainly willing to to help however i i can um i've got a letter here that i'll i'll, I'll pass out to all of you but it's been a real honor uh, to work with you um, this board is, has been very good to me and you have uh, uh, been a, a real joy to work with, if I can use that word. Um, not without challenge, we've all, we've, you know, but we've done some great things together and I really appreciate your support. Um, likewise, the, the staff uh, here is, is just a very professional staff. They work hard for the people here in Silt, and uh, and I've just really enjoyed my time with them as well. Uh, so it's it's certainly bittersweet, but uh, some I've told the mayor that uh, uh, I've had a few people tell me that when you know, you know. And uh, even as recently as last September, October, when we were having our conversations about my work performance, I it, I didn't know then. It's uh, really came upon me. Uh, in a, kind of a more sudden sort of fashion. And uh, so I am uh, grateful for this opportunity, but uh, it's time for me to move on. But uh, like I, I said, I'm certainly willing to, to help out how I can to transition, because I want to make sure we uh, stay in good hands. I didn't plan to cry in a meeting. <laughs> wow. I'm trying hard. <laughs> <laughs> too. Well, I hope it's cloudy that day because, you know, if you want to ride to the sunset, if it stays cloudy the next six <laughs> months, then, you know. <laughs> dramatic. Wow. <laughs> wow, I thank you for all your hard work. Uh, you've, you've definitely changed the momentum of this town. I feel. What size shoes do you wear? Because the next guy's got to have a little bit yeah, bigger. Be They're small, yeah. actually. <laughs> I think we all appreciate everything Jeff has done for us. Um, you know, I hate to say I was disappointed when he told me, but I was disappointed when he told me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but but I understand. You know, everyone gets to a point in their life, and if you you do, you, you get that feeling. You want to move on. You want to move on. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, as far as the board's concerned, our next steps are. You know, Jeff has mentioned that he'd be willing to help us you know, look for a, a replacement. Um, so I think he's a very knowledgeable and wise resource to use in that search. Yes. I just, yeah. I assumed you'd be here to the end of your contract, at least, you know. <laughs> but... Well, all I can say, it's been an absolute honor working with you. Thank you. Um, caring person, very knowledgeable, caring about the community, and really organized, and really a person that listens not only to the employees, but listens to the people from the town and listens to the board, and really performs. It's been great and awesome working alongside such such an amazing person, professional. Um, you will be truly missed. Thank you. I'll buy it, definitely. I, I would be remiss to say this again. You can still but change your mind. The staff, <laughs> um, I, I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't do it without an incredible staff. I mean, these guys are great, and uh, and I told the mayor too that the the board has been great to work with, and it's wonderful to have a board that doesn't it, it's you know stays at thirty thousand feet most of the time until there's something that needs to get some boots on the ground, and then you come in and you help. So that's uh, that's been great to to work with you too. So I I would. I'm not going to let it lie that I am the only person here. 
I only have one prerequisite. We need a short list of replacements before you can leave. <laughs> we'll just lock the door from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for everything. I think yep. you are part of the reason I started working within the town in any capacity. So you, I'm your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to interpret Take that. that as <laughs> <laughs> I'm just proud. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate everything. Thank you. Okay. Well, next up. Next up, <laughs> I mean, <I'll> be <laughs> administrator and staff comments and updates uh, from the board and board comments. Okay, so when do we hear back, uh, Trey, from the GOCO grant for the community park? We were here, the, we were here something around January 22nd on if we go to stage three. Okay. And if we go to that stage, we will find out in March if we got funded. Okay, got it. So it's still a few months down the road. Okay. And our Another question would be, are we still contracted with that grant writing? I forgot her name. Yes, Deborah. Deborah, that's right. Okay, because I believe she was super helpful uh, to us. She helped us uh, write quite a few grants that we were pretty successful with. So, yep, okay. Trey and I talk to her every day. Okay. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> we have emails with her. Very frequently. And then, and what is it? Okay, Bi-weekly, we do an update with everything yeah. okay. or something like that with her. I wonder if she'd like to be town administrator. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> not so quick. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> I need to process this. Did she not try that once? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes. Let, let us at yeah. least sleep over it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't mean it that way. Everyone's like, bye. No. <laughs> hey. Not me. I, I There's totally the door. understand. <laughs> and I will sleep better knowing you have someone too. Yeah. Believe me. Oh, for sure. That's it for me. Well, yeah. Um, no, that's, I don't have much. I don't have anything. Okay. Mr. Britton? Um, a whole lot. Uh, I did venture up to the Hershey Pit, saw the sign that's up there. Um, very nice job with it. Everything looks great up there, and I can't wait for next summer. A little chilly up there right now to be throwing those things, but uh, <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a, a really neat thing for the town to be able to have some really great events. Okay. Trusty Claus? Um, it's January. I have, I have <laughs> a list. Anyway, um, my first question is the... Uh, Update on the lot by the Holiday Inn Express. You know, the ones that they bought for the electric charging station. And I thought we had something like by February they needed to... They had 180 days to file something. Yeah, and I just didn't know if there's any progress made on that. They had a staffing turnover and are working on a new proposal that they'll present to the board. Soon. Soon, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We, All right. We do intend to come to the board probably that first meeting in February with a legal update on all of that. Uh, what you're, it, it, because it, you're right, that does expire in uh, February. And then the town can uh, start moving toward the process of reacquiring the land if it so chooses it has two years to do that um, obviously well, I think it's obvious the town would rather have an operating business there um, so there'll be some conversation about uh, they're going to come in and, and do a, give you let you know what where what they're doing and where they are with it um, we have been contacted by their design team and they're moving some things forward now so fingers crossed gotcha and then i have some concerns at autumn ridge and my concerns are i'm seeing them building huge burn piles out there and i really don't want them to burn anything in town just because it's against town code to burn anything so i just saw the big burn piles there 
and I just, you know, wanted to kind of make sure that they don't do it in town just because then that, that just sets a precedent if they do it, other people to do it. And just because there is some controversy over that, I just don't want them to be burning those piles over there. And another thing I noticed at Autumn Ridge, down below by the old restaurant, there were piles of concrete, and they're burying those that concrete with dirt. And I don't think you're supposed to landfill things, you know, in town either. So that was my other concern with Autumn Ridge, because I don't exactly know what they're burying besides the concrete. And I just don't want that to be, you know, an issue in the future. And then I had actually an, an XPNZ member ask me about the entrance to the uh, river run, the tiny homes. Their concern was, you know, how come it's, and I, I understand it's winter, you, you know, and the ground's frozen, but their concern was why hasn't this entrance been built yet? And I know there's the storage unit component of that too. And do you have any sort of update on us what they're trying to do? or you know timeline we did present them with a list of things that need to be changed to come into compliance and that was given to them today so we will know more about their response in the future okay in the pretty near future here okay got you and um you know, I, I had a couple questions earlier in the day, so, so I came over here and asked a couple questions, and then I had the thought of, because we were discussing, you know, the, uh, the, um, the employee handbook. And anyway, the issue came up with overtime hours. And right now, you know, town staff, they just get comp hours, you know, so then they get hours if they work overtime. And in the future, I'd like to see it change to where they actually get compensated for overtime, you know, or at least have the option to do comp hours or get pay for it. And I know, obviously, we've already approved this budget, but maybe for next year's budget, and yeah, I mean, it would be an added expense, but I feel it would be a benefit to the employees that work overtime. So that's, yeah. just, that's just my thought on that. Aren't they getting paid? I mean, oh, they're, oh. they're getting comp hours right now, but they're not actually getting paid any overtime pay. Oh, I see what you're saying now. Yeah. Yeah, still, so if they work five hours overtime, yeah, they could take five hours off. Do we still have you know? the HR committee? Yes. Who, mm -hmm. who is in the HR committee? Jerry and I. We can certainly present that. Yeah, because if, if we're trying to, you know, do things for the employees and, you know, <laughs> kind of add some more benefits to them, I think that's an easy... And, and yes, like I said, it would be an added cost to the town, but I, I think that's a good, and I, the, a good way. The cost is the same. Well, currently they get, like, so with Chris's example... If they work five hours over their 40 hours in a week, then they get seven and a half hours of um, comp time that they can take off. So that is within the 2,080 hours that we have budgeted for them because we're not paying them. They're just not here. You know what I'm saying? We're not paying them extra. They're just not here. So it's still within that 2,080 hours. So paying them over time would actually cost us more. More. Do you, do you follow me? I see where you're going, yeah. But they're getting time and a half off comp time, so they're, they're, just, they're choosing to take the comp time versus the overtime, basically give the individual the, the opportunity to do whichever the way they want. Right. Currently, they, there's no choice. They get the comp time, and Chris is wanting them to have the option of either having the additional time off or the extra money on their paycheck. So if you... And we're small enough that they can just write it on their timesheet. It, it wouldn't be where they'd have to opt in to getting paid for it all the time or opt in to having the, the extra time off. We're small enough that they can just write it on their timesheet that they want the money this time or they want the time. So what, uh, what would, I think you 
would you be able to have a dollar amount on what that would cost yearly? Um, I can certainly estimate what it would cost if everybody chose to get uh, money instead of the comp time. Yeah, for, yeah. But for it to be accurate, because you don't know who's going to choose extra time off or who would choose the money. But I can certainly give you um, a dollar amount for the hours in 2023 that were uh, comp hours. I think you would want to have uh, the highest. That would be kind of a budget. worst case. Worst case yeah. scenario, yeah. Well, and yeah. That, Correct. Like we talked about earlier, a lot of that's going to depend on the snow. Yeah. A lot of my guys get their comp hours come when we're plowing snow. Mm -hmm. So we don't get snow, won't have as much, but if we get a heavy snow year, then it might be more. Right. They get paid their regular salary then on that comp time? No, it would be that, it would be time and a half. Yeah. The no, the comp time we have now, if they work two hours of overtime, they basically get three hours of comp time, which is like vacation time. So in the next week, two weeks, they need to take off to do something. They can use that three hours and take it off they don't and get, get paid for it. Pay. And they're compensated their normal time pay. and a half at their normal pay. That's what I'm saying. They get their normal versus... pay. Right. Yeah. So they're still getting yeah. paid if they're just the extra. So basically, they're still getting, I mean, they're still getting overtime. They're getting five hours that equals seven. Yeah, it's so just vacation time, overtime. basically, not pay. Yeah. Not extra pay. On not adding to their household income. Yeah. When does the comp time expire? How long do they have to use it? They can only carry 40 hours into the next year. What happens to the extra? They lose it if they don't use it. So it, do, it doesn't roll. No, only no 40 roll, hours no roll out. over. And they can't cash out either? No. Okay. Use it or lose it? Yes. Correct. I think definitely should be a conversation item. Yeah. Later on. Later on. Let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think start with the AHR committee. Yep. Yeah, let them exactly. Get that ball rolling. Yeah. <coughs> Next one, I'll discuss it. <clears throat> yeah, and then the the other question I had was the the. I know the the dirt on the school property came from the alley, the new sewer line, and everything. But they've been moving it. Oh, have they been moving it? Okay. Yes. Gotcha. It will go away when we get that project finished up. Okay. And they have been working on moving it out. Okay, gotcha. And then to, to kind of piggyback on that, and I think the horseshoe pits are wonderful and great and everything, so I'm not, you know, saying anything negative about those. But are those horseshoe pits, are they on all on town property? No. Or are they on? They are partially on RE2 property as well. Okay. And they were made aware that we were doing it, and we had the go ahead from them to go ahead uh -huh. and put that on there. Okay. All right. I just. You know, just just curious when I saw saw the piles of dirt. You know, so all right. Well, thank you for that. <coughs> and and the last thing I like, well, the bridge at the River Preserve. I went over and looked at it, and yeah, I mean, I went under under the ropes and everything, but that sucker is really steep. I had it's to getting climb. redesigned. I, I had to no. crawl up that thing. That's why it's not open yet uh -huh. because. Once the arches got put up and we put the decking on it, we realized it was realized how steep it is. So it's getting redesigned, and we already have the parts coming to oh, okay. correct cool. that problem. All right, thank you. Yeah, you know, like I said, you know, I, I'm just curious because I'm like, <laughs> I can't get up this thing unless yeah, no, I'm on my hands was... and knees. So, all yeah. right. Well, thank you. Okay, and I'm... okay. Trusty Seifert. So I see you must have called the state on them signs. I see they were out there the next day, or somebody was. But I see they like the one they just sprayed the piece. Yeah, they sprayed it orange. Yeah. That, and they know I've told them a couple times that sign's laying in front of our shop up at the yard. So I don't know if they just didn't remember it was up there to go get it or what, but yeah. And there's them couple there, and then the one on 16th Street for the underpass, and then the one at the other end, so... But you must have called them because they were there the next day, and when I seen their fix was to spray paint it. <laughs> yeah. At least put something over. You're still going to drive over and tear a tire, whether it's orange or not. That's so. all I got. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem? 
Uh, just another thank you to SOPD for taking the time earlier this evening to show me how that uh, flock system is going to work in practice and what their control measures are. Obviously, I was the biggest cynic before, um, but again, trusting in the people makes it an easier decision for me. So thanks again for the time. Is it? Is it? Uh, I got nothing except an executive session. So I will read some stuff here, and then we will get the executive session all set up in a breakout room. So, Mr. Mayor, when you get to the description, I'm going to add a little language to that. Okay. All right. Um, well, so I moved to go into executive session. Uh, to discuss the purchase, acquisition, lease, transfer, or sale of any real, personal, or other property interest under CRS section 24-6-4024A, uh, discussion on the purchase of property. And the property is located in the vicinity of the intersection of Front Street and 7th Street and Grand Avenue and 7th Street. But those additional items, would someone like to make a second that motion? I will second. Okay. Uh, motion to enter an executive session by the mayor, seconded by Trustee Clausen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We will get set up here in our breakout room. I'm here. No, I'm here. The executive session has concluded. No formal action was taken in the ex executive session, uh, but negotiators were given direction. Uh, the Participants in the executive session where no one entered the executive session and no one left the executive session. For the record, if any person who participated in the executive session believes that any substantial discussion of any matters not included in the motion to go into executive session occurred during the executive session or that any improper action occurred during the executive session in violation of open meetings law, I'd ask that you state your concerns for the record. Yep. Seeing none, the next item on the agenda is adjournment. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Trustee Seifert to adjourn the meeting. Seconded by Trustee Clausen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? See you, fellas. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> I got ahead of myself there. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs>